Well, hello and welcome to High Five. I want to read one of the shortest verses in the Bible. It is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 17 and verse number 32. And it is articulated by none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. And he simply said, Remember Lot's wife. I want to talk to you about that for a moment. Our Lord made this statement in the context of impending judgment on Jerusalem. So in this video cast, I want us to examine several reasons why I think our Lord is saying, remember Lot's wife. A very pertinent questions out there are very, there are several pertinent questions that I think we should ask ourselves. Who was Lot's wife? If you read it, the account given to us in our Bible, you would not find any reference to her name. But in one of the Jewish traditions and the Jewish ancient text, she was called Edo or Edith. Edo or Edith. She was a prosperous woman may, who may have been at, attached to a good life. She lived a good life while in Sodom and Gomorrah. Though there is no indication that she participated in the lifestyle of Sodom and Gomorrah, her story implies that she had learned to tolerate it and her heart had, been, uh, had become divided with the lifestyle of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's wife is remembered not for being the wife of righteous Lot, or a mother of children, but she was remembered for what she became, and that is she became a pillar of salt. Another question that I believe is worth asking is, why did she become a pillar of salt and nothing else? Well, according to another ancient text from Judaism called Genesis Rabbah, R-A, B-B, a H. In the classical period, according to this ancient text, I have found these things. Quote, she offered no hospitality to the angels when they visited her home. The angels did not initially want to be with Lot's wife, but they wanted to be with Lot because he was a righteous man. And this is according to Genesis Rabbi, the 10th chapter and verse number 5. She even tried to stop them from entering her house. Lot's wife divided their home or their house into two parts and told her husband, if you want to receive these men, do so in your part. And this is in Genesis Rabbi, the 50th chapter and verse number 6. Lot, on the other hand, wanted the members of his household to participate in the meritorious act of hospitality as his husband, sorry, as his uncle Abraham did when he received, Abraham received these messengers of God. So, what Lot did was he asked his wife to bring salt, and that was a traditional way of welcoming guests by giving them a cool drink of water and by giving them guests are amount many of the tradition of those days. But when Lot asked her, according to this account, to bring salt, she responded, quote, Do you even wish to learn this bad habit from your uncle Abraham? And this is in Genesis Rabbah chapter 50 and verse number 4. She finally complied with her husband's request, but she acted cunningly in order to remove the guests from her house. She went to her woman neighbors to borrow salt, so they asked her, why do you need salt? Why didn't you prepare beforehand, knowing that you would have guests? And she answered, well, it is, a, it is a surprise. I didn't know that we were having guests. She said, I have made enough salt for my family, but the guest that my husband has has come to us and you ask me to get 
some salt. So in this manner, all the women in her neighborhood knew that Lot had guessed. And then in turn, they told it to the entire community of Sodom and Gomorrah, according to the Midrash Agadha. And this is in Genesis 19 and 26. To end the findings from this ancient text as to why she became a pillar of salt, it says, because she sinned through salt, Lot's wife was punished by being turned into a pillar of salt. End of quote. Now this is very interesting. I don't know whatever truth is applied to this tradition, but it surely gives us something to think about. She sinned through salt and she became a pillar of salt. Now I want to read a portion of scripture from the text about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm reading the 19th chapter of Genesis and from verse 17 and it says, And as soon as the angels got them outside, one of them said, one of the angels said, Run for your lives. Don't look back. Don't stop anywhere in the plain. Run to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to the angels, No, Lord, please. Your servant has indeed found favor in your sight and you have shown me great kindness by saving my life. But I can't run to the mountains. The disaster will overtake me and I will die. Look, this town is close enough for me to run to. It is a small place. Please let me go there. It is only a small place, isn't it? So I can survive. He said, that is the angel of the Lord said, All right, I'll grant you your request about this matter too and will not overthrow the town you mentioned. Hurry up, run there, for I cannot do anything until you get there. Therefore, the name of the city is Zoar. The sun had risen over the land when Lot reached Zoar. Then the Lord rained burning sulfur or fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah out of the sky, and he overthrew these cities and the entire plains and all the inhabitants of the cities and whatever grew on the ground. Verse 26 concluded, But his wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. They escaped with just their memories intact as God destroyed that wicked city of Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot and his daughters pressed on. The sad thing was that she looked back. Mistress Lot looked back. Now, why did she look back? Why did she look back? Well, I don't think it was a casual glance because out of the authorized version and the tr translation of the authorized version from the, Hind from the Hebrew text, it says she looked around behind Lot. She looked around from behind Lot. So it was a deliberate look. It was more than just a glance. So a good question to ask, was it a glance of regret or was it a glance for a longing for what she left behind? Was she missing what was left behind? In a book called Going the Distance, written by a Christian author called Ed Rowell, he says, there are two types of pains in life. The pain of self-discipline, which is always eased by accomplishment. And after you have achieved your goals, then the pain eases up. And secondly, there is the pain of regret, which aches within you until you die, the pain of regret. Whenever we think about the evil things that we have done in our lives, brothers and sisters, we should allow our regrets to lead us to repentance. 
or as St. Paul puts it in 2 Corinthians, the 7th chapter and verse number 10, and he says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. Repentance is a gift of God, according to 2 Timothy and the second chapter and verse 25 and 26, and it says, Perhaps God will grant them repentance to know the truth. Verse 26 says, Then they may come to their senses and escape the devil's trap, having been captured by him to do his will. So repentance is a gracious gift from God. In reference to Mistress Lot, I believe that she was not sorry she was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah. I believe she was longing for what used to be. And in the text that I have read, quoting our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord used this text as an example to one warn believers of the sin of impending danger, of looking back at their lives of sin. Our Lord says, Remember what happened to Lot's wife. Whoever clings to this life would lose it, and whoever loses his life will save it. Verse number 33 of this text. And I believe God was saying, Learn from Lot's wife. Learn from her. There is impending judgment coming your way on sin and unrighteousness. And do not savor the things of this world. Love not the world, nor the things of the world, for he that loves the world, the love of the Father, is not in him. Do not trifle with sin. Do not trifle with worldliness or the devil, because judgment will befall a person who trifles thereby. Lot's wife represents several things to us today as we live in these last days. First of all, Lot's wife represents the last days carnal church people or carnal believers. According to Romans and the first chapter and reading from verse number 28, St. Paul tells us, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful. And verse number 32 says, who knowing the judgment of God, knowing the impending judgment of God on all unrighteousness, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do they pursue in these things or do these things, but they have pleasure in doing them. Such is a reflection of Mistress Slot. Lot's wife also represents to us the person who has relationships with righteous people. You must remember that Mistress Lot's husband was a righteous man, according to 2 Peter 2, verses 7 and 8, which referred to Lot as a righteous man. But not only her husband was righteous, her uncle, Abraham, was a man of faith, and he too was righteous. The righteousness of our relatives won't be good enough for us. We must acquire our own righteousness in God, nor must we depend on the righteousness of our friends and church members. The righteousness of your mother, father, brother, sister, husband, or wife 
is good enough for them and not for you. You have to believe, as the saying goes, God does not have any grandchildren. God only has children. Man's sinfulness is not seen as just the wicked thing he does, but man's sinfulness is also seen in the way that people respond to God. Do you respond to God uh, abruptly? Do you respond to God immediately? This is the way that God wants you to respond rather than, as we say, dilly-dallying or, or just wasting time and lingering and hardening your heart. How do you respond to God? Today, if you hear the voice of God, harden not your heart. The Bible tells us in these days, men will have a form of godliness and deny the truth thereof. Mistress Lot perished, although she was warned to flee. She was given a warning to flee out of Sodom and Gomorrah by the Lord himself. And even though there are several warnings that are being given to us through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are people who still pursue in sin and unrighteousness. It is true that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and the Bible tells us that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mistress Lot perish even though she was warned. And this is why the gospel is preached, because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It gives mankind an opportunity to repent. If they turn from their sins, God will be merciful and forgive them. But if they fail to repent, they would face the awful consequences. We must obey him, according to James, the fourth chapter and verse 17, it says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him is sin. And then also in the first chapter and verse 22 of James, it says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only in your own eyes. Mistress Lot, she perished also even though her sin was small. So this is another lesson we can learn from Mistress Lot. She perished even though her sin was small. She looked back. All that she did was look back. She didn't murder anybody. She didn't uh, steal anything from anybody. She looked back. And God says, don't look back. She perished by looking back. Uh, it is true that she might have left friends behind. But when God warns us about something, we must obey his voice. He said, don't look back, and she did. It wasn't a big sin, as we might say. It was just looking back. And she perished and became a pillar of salt. The gospel account warned believers of the consequences of looking back on their previous life of sin. It is called backsliding. In the Gospel of St. Luke and the 9th chapter and verse 62 we read, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. As I said, backsliding is a sin. Backsliding is not just falling backwards. Backsliding is also failing to go forward spiritually. Are you going forward spiritually? Mistress Lot was not going forward spiritually, but she was falling backward. Do not make the same error as Mistress Lot and suffered for her decision. We are not, if we are not moving forward in Christ, then we are naturally going backward. As the saying goes, a dead fish cannot go upstream. 
it takes a living fish to swim upstream. In the Christian life, there is no standing still. We are either progressing or regressing. We are either moving upward and forward or we are moving backwards. The book of Genesis, the, sorry, the book of Jeremiah and the second chapter and verse 19, the prophet Jeremiah told us very, very, very strongly, your own wickedness will correct you and your backsliding will rebuke you. Know therefore and see that is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God. It is worth a second read. Your own wickedness will correct you and your backsliding will rebuke you. Know therefore and see it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God. And then in the third chapter of the same book, Jeremiah and the 22nd verse, here is what the Lord says, Return, you backsliding children, and I will heal you from your backsliding. Remember Lot's wife and not look back. There is nothing to gain in this world. This world has nothing to offer you. All that is in the world is the sin of the flesh and it leads to destruction. We are not to savor those things or to crave those things. God has delivered us and we should not go back to a life like a dog would go back to its vomit. There is a better life ahead for you, brothers and sisters. If I'm speaking to someone who once enjoyed the Christian life, but today your love for Jesus has become cold, let me ask you to stop and consider where you are. Do not pursue a life of sin and pleasure anymore. It will bring death and destruction. Remember Lot's wife. Don't neglect the day of visitation and the day of salvation. And perhaps I'm speaking to someone who has never confessed Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and he gave his son to save the world. If you live and die in your sin, you would perish because sin will bring judgment. And our Lord Jesus Christ came to die on the cross, which he did to save you from your sin and judgment. So I want to appeal to you to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as I minister to you today and to make a confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to turn your life over to him. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, the Bible says that you will be saved. And may I re lead you in this simple confession of faith? Would you say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus came to die for my sins and the sins of the world. He paid the price of blood, the atoning price of blood, that I might live eternally and that my name may be written in the book of life. I thank you for this assurance of faith. And I thank you that you said, because my name is written in the book of life, angels would rejoice in heaven. And for those of you who have once been backslidden, Return to the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent from my backsliding. Give me grace. This time, Lord, as I call upon your name to save me from sin and damnation. These are desperate days. And with the same fervor that our Lord used when he said, Remember Lot's wife. I am asking you, who are viewers of this program, to make your calling an election show. Remember Lot's wife. Make your calling an election show. If we can be of any further help to you, if you need further counsel or prayer, I don't know, maybe you don't, but if you do, 
then please call the numbers that are on your screen or write to us at the given email address. Remember to give us a subscribe and a like. Um, let us know from where you are viewing this program. Let us know if you have made a commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ by viewing this videocast today. This videocast is coming to you through the courtesy of Missions Tabernacle of William and Water Lane Streets in Princess Town, Trinidad, West Indies. The lead pastors are Noelling and Annecy McIntosh, and together they lead this church in Princess Town at two locations and they would be willing to hear from you if you will take the time to write to them. I have been hosting this program and my name is Anthony K. Singh for the past few months and certainly I would like to hear from you. Tell me from where you are viewing this program. This video cast has been put together by the able and by the willing servant of God called Aaron Jones. I am grateful to you for your labor of love. This is a job well done, Aaron. Thank you for your contribution in helping me to present the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So until next week, at the same time, I trust that you would join me for another high five. I pray that God will give you a healthy and a happy life. I pray that God will give you a happy week, a blessed week. Things that have not been released to you will be released to you in terms of the blessings of God Almighty. May you have the favor of God. May your aches and pains be few. May God crown your life with love and kindness and tender mercies. And may he bless you with abundance. So until next time, the Lord bless you. Stay happy and stay well in Jesus' name.